بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله صلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد Let's move on to the third hadith of the chapter Hadith number 31 The author Hafiz bin Hajar May Allah mercy upon him He states وعن علي رضي الله عنه في صفة أو في صفة وضوء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال ومسح برأسه واحدة أخرجه أبو داود وأخرجه تلمذي والنسائي بإسناد صحيح بل قال تلمذي إنه أصح شيء في الباب نعرض علي رضي الله عنه and this hadith is a clip or a smaller section from a larger report a more extensive tradition that describes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's wudu Ali reported here is that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wiped his head one time the Messenger of Allah wiped his head only once this hadith is collected by Imam Abu Dawood it's also been collected by Imam At-Tirmidhi and Imam An-Nasai. And its chain of narration is Sahih. Its chain of narration is sound. Hafiz bin Hajar rahimahullah says, Rather, Bel, Imam Tirmidhi said, This is the most authentic narration regarding the topic. This is the most authentic narration regarding the topic, regarding the Prophet Wasallam's wudu and the wiping of the head, etc. Khayr inshallah So the highlighting point from this hadith Is How many times Should the Muslim Wipe his head When he or she Makes wudu That's number one Secondly Is it the sunnah For a person To make multiple wipes Or wipings Of his or her head When they make wudu How many times the bare necessity What's the preferred amount of times The sunnah And is it even lawful Is it even legislated For a Muslim To repeat The wiping of His or her head So that's the main Lesson From this hadith Obviously As Hafiz bin Hajar Rahimahullah ta'ala said Is that this is from a longer report A longer version As Sanani Rahimahullah says Regarding this hadith after he speaks on the biography of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda he says huwa qit'atun min hadith tawil istawfa fihi sifat al-wudu'i min awalihi ila akhirih wa yufidu ma afada hadith Uthman wa inna ma ata al-musannif rahimahullahu bima fihi at-tasrih bima lam yusarrih bihi fi hadith Uthman wa huwa masah ar-ra'si maratan فإنه النص أنه واحدة مع تصريحه بتثليث ما عداه من العطاء. He says the only reason why the author brought this narration after the narration of Uthman is that Ali's hadith is more explicit with regards to the wiping of the head and how many times it should be done, and that everything else was washed or wiped three times. The face, the hands, this, that, etc. Three times. But Ali's hadith mentions is that the head was only wiped once. So that's the main faida that the author intends and aims after. He aims for the part that specifically mentions three times washing this, one time wiping that. And that the head should be wiped once even though the other body parts are washed Three times. Then he goes on to say, وَقَدْ اخْتَلَفَ الْعُلَمَاءُ فِي ذَلِكَ فَقَالَ قَوْمٌ بِتَثْلِيثِ مَسْحِهِ كَمَا يُثَلَّثُ غَيْرُهُ مِنَ الْعَضَائِ إِذْ هُوَ مِنْ جُمْلَتِهَا وَقَدْ ثَبَتَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ تَثْلِيثُهُ وَلَمْ يُذْكَرْ فِي كُلِّ حَدِيثٍ ذُكِرَ فِيهِ تَثْلِيثُ الْأَعْضَاءِ Furthermore, the scholars, they differ on this issue. The fuqaha, they differ on Wiping the head more than one time. Some say that the head should be wiped three times. Just like the other parts are washed three times. He says there is a hadith that is authentic here. That states that it's done three times. 
Even though three times wiping the head isn't mentioned in every single hadith, but there are some hadiths that he says are sound. Therefore, we don't say that it isn't sound just because it isn't mentioned in every hadith or the main hadiths. Now, let's pause the translation here. Basically, what Hafiz bin Hajar or what Sanani rahimahullah he's saying here is that some scholars may hold the view is that if wiping the head three times was lawful, if it was sunnah, then why wasn't it mentioned in the main hadiths? Especially the hadith of Uthman, which is the staple hadith concerning the sifat al wudu of the Prophet ﷺ from the sunnah. So in Ani's view is that just because it isn't mentioned in that hadith or other hadiths doesn't mean that it is not authentic. And those other scholars, they're saying or they've said a proof and an evidence that it's not authentic is that it wasn't mentioned in the main staple hadiths. Sanani rahimullah then says, فَإِنَّهُ قَدْ أَخْرَجَ أَبُوْ دَوُودُ مِنْ حَدِيثِ عُثْمَانَ فِي تَثْلِيثِ الْمَسْحِ أَخْرَجُهُ مِنْ وَجْهَيْنِ صَحَحَ أَحَدُهُمَ مِنْ خُزَيْمَ وَذَلِكَ كَافٍ فِي ثُبُوتِ هَذِهِ السُنَّةِ He says, and the Sahih of Ibn Khuzayma, may Allah have mercy upon him, and we've explained many times before, is that Imam al-Bukhari doesn't, he isn't the only scholar that has a Sahih book, nor is Imam Muslim the only scholar who wrote a book in the Sahih genre, a book of traditions in which they consider, the authors consider them to be sound and genuine. Ibn Khuzayma is from those scholars. Sanani, the commentator states, is that in Sahih Ibn Khuzayma, there was a report that uh, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu wiped his head three times and he says this Ibn Wajhain is more than one isnad for this uh, etc. Ibn Khuzayma holds one of those isnads to be sahih etc. He says and this clearly shows is that it is sunnah. It clearly shows that that report right there is enough to prove that it's sunnah. He then says وَقِيلَ لَا يُشْرَعُ تَثْنِثُهُ لأن أحاديث عثمان صحة كلها كما قال أبو داود تدل على مسح الرأس مرة واحدة وبأن المسح مبني على التخفيف فلا يقاس على الغسل وبأن العدد لو اعتبر في المسح لصار في سورة الغسل. Another view, other scholars, they say the head is not to be wiped three times. It should not be wiped three times. And the proof that it should not be wiped three times is that all versions of Uthman's hadith, all of them state that the Prophet wiped his head once. And none of them state that it was three times. And that proves, as we previously explained, that it's, that it's shad, that it's not mahfuz. Another proof that they use, the scholars who say that the head should not be wiped three times, another point of view or wajhat to nadar Another way that they look at it is is that wiping the head is based off of ease, tafif. It's supposed to be easy and simple for the people. And if a person wipes his head three times, it's no longer easy. And it isn't to be compared to washing of the other body parts. Three times you wash the arm, three times the feet, three times the face. Secondly, is that if a person continues to wipe his head, then eventually it'll turn into washing his head you wipe your head once and then you wipe it twice then you wipe it three times eventually your whole head, entire head is going to be wet and that's not the manner of the head and the legislation of wiping the head khayr inshallah then as sanani rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions the first group of scholars counter argument their counter argument he says well ojiba بأن كلام أبي داود ينقضه ما رواه هو وصححه ابن خزيمة كما ذكرناه والقول بأن المسح مبني على تخفيف قياس في مقابلة النص فلا يسمع فالقول بأنه يصير في سورة الغسل لا يبال به بعد ثبوت عن الشارع ثم رواية الترك لا تعارض رواية الفعل وإن كثرت رواية الترك إذ الكلام أنه غير واجب بل هو سنة من شأنها أن تفعل أحيانا وتترك أحيانا. Sanani says, what Imam Abu Dawood said 
regarding the narrations of Uthman excluding wiping the head more than once. He says that that's, that's not absolute. It is an absolute. And rather, Imam Abu Dawood himself has collected in his book and Ibn Khuzayma has declared to be authentic the previously mentioned narration is that it was done more than once. So the first counter argument is rather there are hadiths that prove that the head is wiped more than once. Play it. Secondly, saying that the head is only to be wiped uh, briskly or quickly, easily, takhfif, is supposed to be easy and simple. He says, then that's qiyas. That's using one's mind, using something which is analytical, trying to break it down, trying to deduce it mentally in front of text, in front of the narration that states that the Prophet did it. So therefore, there's no qiyas, there's no aqal, there's no ra'i, there's no opinion or no view when it clashes with the text, when it clashes with the dalil. Thirdly, just because most narrations don't mention it doesn't mean that they prohibited it, that it goes against it. Rather, it isn't obligatory, it's a sunnah. It can be done sometimes, and it can be left off other times. It doesn't have to be done all the time. It's not something which the scholars are saying is mandatory and obligatory and has to be done each and every single time. Khair, inshallah. So that's the end of uh, that uh, hadith, that discussion of San'ani, rahimahullah. Uh, and as you can clearly see, the ulama of Islam, the fuqaha of Islam, they differ on it being sunnah or not. They differ on it being sunnah or not. And they don't necessarily differ on it being three times, ma mandatory three times or not. But they differ on, is it legislated? So here, there are two main views of the ulama about Islam. You pick the view that makes the most sense to you. And seems the most sound to you. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Moving forward, he says, وَأَخْرَجَهُ أَيْ حَدِيثَ عَلِيْ النسائي والتنمذي بإسناد صحيح بل قال إلى أن قال وأخرجه أبو داود من ستة أو من ست طرق وفي بعض طرقه لم يذكر المضمضة والاستنشاق وفي بعض ومسح على رأسه حتى لم يقتر إلى آخره طيب حديث number 32 وعن عبد الله بن زيد بن عاصم رضي الله عنهما في صفة الوضوء قال ومسح رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم برأسه فأقبل بيديه وأدبرا متفق عليه وفي لفظ لهما بدأ بمقدم رأسه حتى ذهب بهما إلى قفاه ثم ردهما إلى المكان الذي بدأ منه Then he says uh, narrated عبد الله ابن زيد ابن عاصم رضي الله عنه regarding the description of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's wudu as well and this goes to show us, just like Sufi to Salah, one companion narrates something, another companion narrates something, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and then we have the whole entire view uh, of the Prophet Salah. Salah. And one narration is going to be more explicit than another, more detailed than another, shorter, longer than the other, etc. And the same applies to Hajj, and the same applies to Wudu, and the same applies to the other issues as well. So this narration is reported by Abdullah ibn Zaid ibn Asim. May Allah be pleased with him. Concerning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's wudu, it says, Masaha, the Prophet Sallallahu he wiped his head. فَأَقْبَلَ بِيَدَيْهِ وَأَدْبَرَ So he made iqbal with his hands and then he made idbar. Iqbal and idbar. And obviously, these words can be translated in more than one way. Rather, in Arabic, it's understood as more than one way. Aqbala could mean to go to the front. To go to the front. And adbara could mean to go to the back. But another understanding of aqbala or adbara is the exact opposite. Aqbala meaning starting from the front, going to the back, etc. But for now, we'll leave it and we'll translate it as for aqbala. He started in the front. وَأَدْبَرَ Okay, then he went back. But you can clearly see how it can be reversed. The understanding in Arabic, to go from the qubul to the dubur, to go from the front 
to the back. Or the front, f- start from the front to the back. For Aqabala, he started in the front, then he went from the back, back to the front, right? Khair, inshallah. And this hadith is agreed upon by Imam al Bukhari and by Imam Muslim. In another version of this hadith, it states, Bada'a bi muqaddami ra'sihi. The Prophet ﷺ began in the front of his head, his forehead, his forelock. And this version clearly expresses what's meant. What's meant by Aqbala. Hatta dhahaba bihima ila qafahu. Until he took his two hands to the nape of his neck. This clearly, explicitly shows what's meant by Aqbala. Then it says, Thumma raddahuma. Then he returned his two hands ila al-makan al-ladhi bada'a min. Back to where he started. Meaning, back to the forehead. So this version shows us is that the Prophet Wasallam's two blessed hands started in the beginning of his head, his forehead. And then he took them to the nape of his neck. And then he wiped back over from the nape of the neck to the forehead. To the forehead. Now, does this mean that the Prophet wiped more than once? Or is this itself one masha, one wiping? Now, what's important is, is that the narration clearly shows he started from the forehead to the nape, nape back to the forehead. Khayr inshallah. So the main uh, lesson from this hadith, Wajhu shahid min al-hadith, is a more detailed look at the kayfiyat al-mas'h, as how the head is to be wiped. We spoke on it being wiped, we spoke on how many times it's supposed to be wiped, and now we're speaking on how to wipe it one times or two times or three times, etc. Khairan inshallah. Salani rahimahullah, he goes on to uh, mention the biography of Abdullah ibn Zayd ibn Asim. May Allah have mercy upon him and may Allah be pleased with him. And then he says, ulama'i thalathatu aqwal. The scholars of Islam, they have three views, meaning three madhabs, three madhahib regarding how to wipe the head, where do you start from? Al-awwalu an yabda bi muqaddami ra'sihi alladhi yali al-wajh fa yadhhabu ila al-qafa thumma yurudduhuma ila al-makan alladhi bada'a minh wa hu mubtada'u al-sha'ri min haddi al-wajh wa hadha alladhi yu'tihi zahiru qawlihi bi bada'a bi muqaddami ra'sihi hatta dhahaba bihima ila qafahu thumma raddahuma ila hatta aw thumma raddahuma ila akhirihi Tayyip He says here the first madhab, the first view, is that the Muslim who's making wudu should start with the forehead. Start right at the peak of one's head, as we explained. Then go to the nape, then return back to the forehead. And he explains how that is taken from. Uh, the wording of the hadith. And we also explain how the linguistics, the aqbala, adbara, etc. Uh, thani, the second view, and yabda'a bi mu'akhari ra'sihi wa yumur ila jihatil wajh thumma yarji'u ila al-mu'akhar muhafadatan ala zahri lafdi aqbala wa adbara falikbalu ila al-muqaddami al-wajh wal idbaru ila nahiyatil mu'akhar وقد وردت هذه الصفة في الحديث الصحيح بدأ بمؤخر رأسه ويحتمل الاختلاف في لفظ الحديث على تعدد الحالات. Madhab number two is for the Muslim to start at the nape of the neck, the back of the neck, then go to the forehead and then return back to the nape, back to the back of your head. And there's a reason why those ulama hold this view. Clearly based off of the concept of Aqbala wa Adbara as well previously explained and simplified. وَالثَّالِثُ And the third madhab أَنْ يَبْدَأَ بِالنَّاصِيَةِ وَيَذْهَبَ إِلَى نَاحِيَةِ الْوَجْهِ ثُمَّ يَذْهَبُ إِلَى جِهَةِ مُؤَخْرِ الرَّأْسِ ثُمَّ يَعُودُ إِلَى مَدَ إِلَى مَا بَدَأَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ النَّاصِيَةِ وَلَعَلَّ قَائِلَ هَذَا قَصِدَ الْمُحَافَظَةَ عَلَى قَوْلِهِ بَدَ and then he says in the third madhab, the third view, is for a person to start with the forehead, the actual forehead. 